Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, thank you very much for coming over to uh, this uh, new conference venue. And uh, um, uh, I would like also to, uh, to welcome uh, those present in Manchester and in Dublin, because this event is, is uh, streamed through to Manchester and Dublin. And uh, all friends there do not know that we had to change the venue of the conference just yesterday night because of an issue at the other conference uh, location. So thanks to the marketing team of COFAS for managing to, uh, to switch all the equipment and, uh, and find a new room at such short notice. Um, again, a warm welcome from COFAS. Um, we are, I have to start with the usual, uh, I would say, uh, regulations. So there should be no fire drill today. Uh, the fire exits are over there at the end of the, the room. Uh, can you please keep your switch, uh, your, your uh, phones on, um, on silent mode? And uh, with this, I think we can really start to look at what we have today uh, in our agenda. So as you can see here, we will have two presentations and a roundtable mainly focused on economic issues. Uh, we'll start with David Smith. Uh, with uh, economic editor for the, the Sunday Times, uh, and he will be followed by Julian Marsili, chief economist of COFAS. We will take no questions for either of them. The questions will come during the, the round table, which will follow, where uh, David and Julian will be uh, joined by Paul Hollingsworth from Capital Economics and John Wheeler, who is um, uh, the director for trade receivables at Office Depot. The roundtable will be um, moderated by Louis Cooper, and after that, we'll have around 10.55, we'll have a break. We'll uh, come back for around 11.30, and we'll deal with one of the other topics of the day, which is cybersecurity, and there we will take questions, because the topic is so uh, specific that after the presentation, we'll take a few questions. Uh, we'll then move on to geopolitical risks and to uh, the second roundtable, again moderated by Louis Cooper, where um, uh, Richard Malinson, who will have presented the, the, the hot topics in terms of geopolitics, will be joined by Chris Torrance from Control Risks, Stephanie Vincent from uh, JP Morgan, and Adrian Johnson, who is the um, uh, International Credit Director at Harley Davidson. Sorry, I should have mentioned that cybersecurity will be dealt by control risk as well, but Oliver Fairbank, uh, so very specialized uh, topic uh, today. So in terms of um, risks, of course, there are contingencies such as those of today, um, and, uh, but there are many other risks, and what is of interest to us first and foremost is trade risk. And uh, as you can see, COFAS being present in over 60 countries across the globe, being able to support its clients in over 100 countries, has got a very, very large footprint. And that footprint is supported also by huge databases because at any point in time, we are at risk on 2.5 million companies. Uh, we are uh, also holding further information on about 65 million names across the globe. So hopefully, when we uh, try to uh, discuss with you and uh, take decisions with you, we do it on an informed basis. Or exposure, as you can see in the, in the chart here, in the pie chart here, uh, with this breakdown, is mainly in, let's say, developed countries, but we have a fair chunk of our exposure, which is in emerging markets as well. Uh, not, probably not very surprisingly, in 2015, our exposure in emerging markets has gone down a tad. Uh, 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 along with just the way the economies have developed. And uh, if you look on the right-hand side, you will see that in terms of sectors, we have a, a pretty diversified exposure, which means that we are supporting trade across geographies and across sectors. Before handing over to um, uh, David Smith, um, we thought it was interesting also to look at the way UK exports were shaping up, and both in terms of absolute size, which you can see uh, on this slide, and the change against a few years back, so basically against 2010. And what you can see is that you can see the major countries were the UK exports, and you can see 
uh, also the trends that have been shaping up. Uh, so clearly, uh, growing exports to the U.S., um, surprisingly to Switzerland. Uh, I've been surprised when I discovered this slide, and a number of other countries. Uh, not surprisingly, probably China, obviously. Uh, but you can see that uh, the U.K. economy is exporting more, I suppose, a lot of services to Switzerland than to China. Um, on this chart, you can also see where COFAS is, is, is located across the UK and Ireland. Um, but probably the most important thing when you look at this, this um, uh, slide and, and the various um, uh, figures which are here is where, as, as companies or as advisors to companies, you see risk shaping up. And obviously, one of the main probably risk or uncertainties is linked to the referendum, which is due to, uh, to occur on the 23rd of June, obviously. And uh, this is why we have decided to start by uh, a few words by David Smith to run you through, through uh, uh, the UK economy and probably already uh, some, um, some views of uh, what Brexit may or may not mean for uh, our economy. With this, I wish you a very good day, a very good day to uh, all friends in Manchester and, and in Dublin, and thanks also for the speakers who will be with them uh, at this point, Ismail Ertuk from the University of Manchester and Konstantin Gordiev from the Trinity College in Dublin. Uh, David, the floor is yours.